In the last video, I created this image using natural gas prices, where we have natural gas price over time, and we used this inset. What I want to do now is to show you how I can take this graphic that is uh, a scaled graphic that is filling the size of the drawing canvas within Datagraph to something that I can export to use with, within other programs. Specifically, the graphic that we're going to create is this one here, which is a PNG file that I exported. I actually use this to post on Twitter to advertise the video that I made to create this graphic. Now, since we're going to be working with the drawing commands a lot, I'm going to go ahead and close my column definitions. And I also want to put my drawing commands along the left-hand side of the screen here. Notice how if I click this shortcut, if you hear that little tweet, it means you just need to open this up a little bit more, move that slider down, and then I click this, and now I get all my drawing commands on the left-hand side. And the entire graphic does scale except for the inset itself. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and hide the inset to make this a little bit cleaner in terms of initially just working with this graphic and resetting the sizes. And I want to um, set exactly the output size that I would like this graphic to be. And that's done from within here in the canvas settings. Currently, the size is set to an automatic setting, which again causes the size to fill the available space in the drawing canvas. But I'm going to change this to specified. And you immediately see how the graphic shrinks down. And it's shrunken to, uh, by default, a 5 inch by 3 inch graphic. I would like this to actually be in pixels. You can change it to either um, inches, centimeters, or I can go ahead and if I just put numbers in, I'm going to do 440 by 440. That's setting my image here to the exact pixel size that I would like the graphic to be. I'd also like to move my legend down to the bottom of the graphic so I don't have all this blank space here. The uh, legend, however, that I'd like to do this with, or I can show you what happens when I move this instead of to the right to down below, and I want to anchor this in the center. But there's one other thing about this legend that, I, that I'm not really happy with for the image that I'm going to export. I don't really like the order that's shown here. The legend command uses the drawing order to display uh, the items that are on the graphic. If you'd like to customize that, we can change the drawing order and specify it in what we call a custom legend. And let me show you again the legend that we're going for. I'd like a legend that looks exactly like this, where the Henry Hub is shown on the left and the futures contracts are listed on the right-hand side. I th just think this looks a lot cleaner. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and hide my old legend, and I'm going to go down to the command list and there you'll find this add custom legend that gives a new command into our graphic and also we want this set below our graph and we want to anchor it in the center. To add items to the custom legend you have to go ahead and open the detail view and if you wanted to you could add a title to the legend. We're actually not going to do that here but all of these buttons that you see are what control or allow us to add things to our legend. I'm going to just use this command button and show you how this works. So if I hit command, I get an item added to my legend. Currently it's just set to nothing. So I'm going to pick a drawing command, the Henry Hub spot price, and I want to show the line color associated with that item in the legend. And sure enough, that shows up now on my screen. And I'm going to keep adding all of the commands that are in my uh, graphic in the order that I would like them to be shown. Now I have all of my items added to my legend, but recall I had this in three columns. So let's go ahead and I can change that using this with command here, with setting. We'll change that to three columns. And I also want to, let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller, but the graph that I created, let me show you that again, that I want to recreate, has only the Henry Hub here. To do that, we're just going to add a blank item into the legend command, and I'm going to do that with a simple 
text label just to illustrate this. So let me just type in something. So you see this would just add a label. I can, I can use my mouse to pick an item in the legend and I can drag these around. So we'll move it to this spot so it moves the futures contracts down one point in the legend, but I'm actually just not gonna put any label there. So it just leaves a blank space. And I like then the way that this uh, shows up on the legend. Now next what I want to do is, you can see how the legend's kind of off to the side here, and I actually want my margins around my graphic to be equal on the, uh, the left and the right hand side. To do that, I can also go back to my canvas settings and open up the detail view. And at the bottom of the canvas settings, you'll find the margin settings. I'm gonna set these in pixels to 60 on either side. Again, if I was using inches or centimeters, I could also specify that. Um, so this is much better. Now my graphic is centered and my legend is centered with the graphic. Uh, the one thing that I don't like here is the location of my y-axis, um, sorry, my y-axis label to be more specific. And I can specify that within the axis settings. So I will open up the detail view and I can change what's referred to as the space for y to narrow. And that looks much better. And also let's go ahead and maybe make the width on our legend a little bit smaller. Next, I'd like to add my inset back to, into my graphic. So I'm gonna unhide the command related to the inset. And again, it, it's not scaling with the graph itself. I have to set the size specifically for my inset. So I'm going to go ahead and I can set the size on this in pixels. I'll just do 100 by 50 just to see about what that looks like. That's a little small for what I actually want. So I can always just go ahead and drag this to a point to where I think that looks decent. I also want to change the axis range of what's being shown, both within my inset as well as the overall graph itself. And recall how already I'm zooming in on a region of this graphic from the first video. Uh, we, we went over uh, how to do that, how to zoom in. And here, um, this is showing me the range of data that is actually being displayed. I'd like to minimize this a little bit to focus in on a shorter period of time. So that's one way that I can do that. But notice how anytime I change the scale on the graph itself, it's also going to change a setting within one of the commands. So for example, if I go into the axis settings for my graphic, let's open this up, and you can see how there's this restrict X that's controlling what range is being shown on my graph. You can see how those settings change as I move this uh, just simply using my mouse to drag this little white bar within the uh, axis. One thing that I want to do is actually expand my date range slightly further than June to give a little bit of an extra region here. because so I think this looks a little bit nicer when we have uh, just a little bit of blank space in our inset. And the other thing I want to do is change my range that's within the inset itself. And again, here's the inset command. So I don't want this to go quite far back as it is right now. We'll go ahead and set that to around June, oops, not 2016, 2015, there we go. We can also be exact in terms of the margin that's on either side of the inset. So if you recall, we set the, the width here to 440 pixels and our margin between the main graph and the side to 60 pixels. So that means I have 320 across and I can just kind of, if you ever wanna confirm this, we can set the location of the inset to zero, zero. So it's telling you this is relative to the upper left corner and the size of it, let's just say it's 320 across. So sure enough, that fills up our entire length. 
and we don't want to do that however so let's go ahead and say we want it 200 so we'll end up with another 60 pixels on either side of our inset and also we'll go ahead and add in uh, an offset in the x direction so now this is also centered within our overall graph so our graph is getting pretty close to what I showed you here let me show you uh, next though how to go ahead and change the title to be two lines as you can see it here and and one way there's actually a couple of different ways we could do this but we'll just go ahead and look at our title uh, title bar that's within the canvas settings and modify from here. So a shortcut to create two lines is to do a backslash n. That's a actually a LaTeX command for those of you familiar with LaTeX that uh, tells the program to add an additional line and we said as of let's see 2016 uh, no June 20th so there we go. Now we have a second line in our title. I often also like to increase the size of my title, the, the font of the title relative to the rest of the graphic. And to change that, we also do that within the canvas settings. This is the only font that's set from within the canvas settings. The remainder of the uh, remainder of the fonts are typically set uh, globally within the style settings or in the specific command that the uh, the the item we want to change refers to, but we'll go ahead and make this uh, slightly larger than the rest of the font. So I just gave this an increase by 20% to make the title a little bit more obvious. So I think the last main component of the graphic that I'm missing are these text labels that I want to add down below. To do that, let's go ahead first and close the axis settings. I'm going to use a label command and, uh, or, sorry, a text command. So we'll go ahead and click the shortcut across the toolbar. And this label is added below. Uh, the location of which by default is set inside the graphic. I want this to be down below. And we're gonna go ahead and move this. And you see how the range of our slider is set to, to a value around the initial point. And if we want that to go outside that range, just keep clicking on the slider and, uh, and the range will expand. And we're going to go ahead and add in the source. And I actually have the text for this. If I click on my column definitions, I made a note when I first created this graphic to, to say, uh, to keep the source. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this text here close my column definition list and type this or just paste this into my text label and notice how it's aligning this off to the left let's go ahead and center that to add a second line below we can just click this small plus to the right of our first text line and we'll say created using Data graph. Now one small detail to fix uh, that, or that I'd like to change is that if you notice here we have both 2.74 in blue and then you can see this 7 that's also in gray. That's because if we go back to looking at our definitions for this file, we had created this graphic originally using this global variable, but when I'm outputting this, uh, I don't want to see both numbers. I really just want to see the Henry Hub spot price, not the futures contract price underneath that. So to fix that, I'm just going to go ahead, go into the futures commands that are associated with the futures data, and we'll just hide the uh, futures contract one price. Now let me actually put my date of interest here back to 620 where I wanted for my final output of my graphic. I can change my font for my graphic uh, across all of the text in that in this graphic using the style settings and I can look at the impact of a particular font font and go ahead and I'm going to leave this as Gil Sands. I can also easily increase 
the size of my font. If I go up to 14, then that makes my legend look a little too big here. To fix that, I can really easily go into my legend command and down at the bottom for all where, where I have fonts set within commands, there's these this setting to reduce, well, increase or reduce given some percentage of the main font. So I'm going to go ahead and just reduce the legend size a little bit and also given my new font that also changes a little bit the location shown here so we can just very quickly fix where our text label is being shown. The last thing I'm going to do is to change my background colors. So I want to change the overall canvas background color and I'm going to change that to fill color 3 and I'm going to also change the background color of my inset. And we do that from within the inset command. And the solid color here, I'm just going to go ahead and make the default background to set that to white. And lastly, the background of our legend, we're going to change this also to white. We actually can't see Futures Contract 4 right now because it's set to the same color. We go into our legend command down to the bottom here. The background is currently set to nothing. That's why it's just it's uh, transparent, so it shows the background color of the actual graph. So we'll change this to a solid color and make that white. Finally, to export our graphic, we'll go to File, Export Graphic. Here we get a list of various formats. I'm going to choose PNG. We'll go ahead and just save this on our desktop. And now I can minimize data graph. Here's my file. And sure enough, this is what we have created. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please contact us, help at visualdatatools.com.